Hey, what's up? I'm Ryan Hay, and today I'm back with another video, this time on Metal LB. Now, OpenShift clusters and Kubernetes that run in the cloud, they offer some conveniences that you don't get by default with on-prem installations or bare metal installations. One of those conveniences just so happens to be the load balancer service type. So in the cloud, when you declare a load balancer service type, Kubernetes will go off for you. It will use the cloud APIs and it will spin up a new layer four load balancer for you so that you can get traffic into your cluster. Now, those APIs aren't available for the most part on-prem. Now, this is where Metal LB comes into play. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can install Metal LB so that you can declare the load balancer service type just like you would in the cloud. Now, if this kind of content is of interest to you, make sure you click the like button, hit subscribe and tick the bell so that you get notified of some upcoming videos that I have like OpenShift Service Mesh and also a video on operators. All right, let's get into it. For anyone not familiar with this diagram, it's just something I put together for my video explaining how to install OpenShift 4 or 5 on bare metal. If you haven't seen that yet and you wanna set up your own on-prem cluster, I'll include the link in the top right of this video. So let's take a quick look at how this will all work. Firstly, what we want here is to be able to simply get an IP address that we can enter into the browser of our hosts outside of the OpenShift network, for example, on this laptop here, which represents my Mac, and have it reach our apps running on OpenShift without the need to append any random high ports in the node port range, which is what you'd have to do if you didn't have access to the load balancer service type. Now that IP has to come from the OpenShift network because ultimately that's where the external traffic will be directed to hit the app running on OpenShift. In this case, we can see here that the OpenShift network is the 192.168.22.24 network. So the first challenge to overcome is even if we were supplied an IP address from the OpenShift network, how would the machine on the LAN know to route to the helper node to reach the OpenShift cluster rather than the laptop's pre-configured default gateway, which in my case is just my home router supplied by my ISP? The answer to that question is to set up a static route. We can basically tell this machine on the LAN that any request to 192.168.22.24 should be directed to interface one of the helper node rather than being forwarded to the default gateway. There's probably many ways to do this, but I think the two most obvious ways would be option one, manually configure each host on the LAN that needs to access apps running on OpenShift with a static route pointing to the OpenShift network. Or option two, to configure the LAN router to distribute the same static route via DHCP. So whenever a new host comes on the network, it already has the route. It's basically an automated way of doing option one. So option two is a good option if your router supports it. And especially if you have many devices on your network that are gonna need to access apps running in OpenShift. In my case though, I only have my Mac to worry about. And anything I show in regards to configuring my router may be useless to anyone that isn't running the same router firmware anyway. So I'm just gonna stick with option one and manually create a static route on my Mac. First up, we just need to recall the IP address of the helper nodes interface one. So in my case, the DHCP address that was assigned when I created the host was 192.168.0.96. As an aside, I've since got the Mac address of that interface and used that to set a static IP using the LAN router so that it doesn't change when I restart that helper node. Because if it did change, Every time I restarted the node, I would also have to update the static route as well. So if you're following along, it's probably a good idea that you also spend a minute to ensure that your helper nodes interface one IP is a static address. So let's add that route. So what we're saying here is that any traffic destined for the network 192.168.22.0 24 should be sent to the host with the IP 192.168.0.96, which in our case is the helper node that bridges the LAN to the OpenShift network. Okay, so we can check that that took effect. And we can see the new route has been added. Cool, so we can test that out some more by pinging a host in the OpenShift cluster. I know that the .201 address just so happens to be control plane one. 202 is control plane two, so we can see that that's working now. So that all looks good. We can now reach the OpenShift cluster from the LAN network. At this point, we're traversing through the helper node, but we're bypassing HA proxy running on that node. 
So if this concerns you, you could configure firewall rules on the helper node to prevent bypassing HA proxy and make the relevant proxy config updates once we configure our load balancers IP address pool. But I'm not gonna do that in this video because this is just for a home lab. And sometimes it's convenient to quickly switch between a cluster IP and a node port and not have to update proxy configs when you're just playing around. So let's start by running a web app and exposing it with a load balancer service and see what we get by default. To do that, we can use the super simple hello world container that I used during my what is a container mini series. By the way, I have cube control alias to K and obviously you could also use OC for this as well. So first up, we can create a new namespace to work in. Then let's deploy the web app. And then we can expose that web app with a load balancer service. Okay, so as expected, the load balancer is built on top of other Kubernetes service types. So we can see that we can access this web app via the cluster IP using this address from within the cluster. So for example, Or of course, we can also use the short form of the service name. But ultimately, we can't use this 172 address anywhere else but inside the cluster. Now, on top of cluster IP, we also have the concept of a node port service. And we've also been given a node port for free in this case as well when declaring the load balancer service type. So I can copy this node port here, pick up any IP of a node inside the cluster, like the 192.168.22.201 for the control plane one node that I used earlier. Now, like I mentioned before, this can work. We can get to our app from outside the cluster. We could just configure the load balancer to point specific requests to any of the nodes in the cluster and target the right node port. But that leaves us with two places that we need to manage config. I think it's preferred that we never really have to touch the load balancer config again, and we keep all our config inside Kubernetes manifests. There's also some other advantages of managing load balancing from within OpenShift itself but I'm gonna cover those in a future video on the OpenShift service mesh. So let's work to populate that pending load balancer field. Let's configure metal LB. Fortunately, this is really straightforward stuff. There isn't too much involved at all. You can see from the front page that metal LB is a load balancer implementation for bare metal Kubernetes clusters. And we need it because Kubernetes does not offer an implementation of network load balancers for bare metal clusters. So let's get this installed. You can select installation from the left-hand menu. We can scroll down to installation by manifest section. And we can see that with these few lines, we can get metal LB installed to the cluster. It's going to install it to the metal LB system namespace. And inside that namespace, we're going to have a deployment called controller, which is a cluster-wide controller that handles the IP address assignment. And we're also gonna have a daemon set called speaker, which is a component that speaks the protocol of your choice, which we'll talk about more in a moment to make the services reachable. Okay, so let's copy each of these lines and run them in our cluster. There we go. And then after that, you just wanna click on this link just below called define and deploy a config map. You can see from the top of the page that metal LB will remain idle until it's been configured. So let's look at how to configure this. The first thing you'll notice is that there's two types of configuration available, and that's because Metal OB operates in either of two different modes. The Layer 2 mode is the easiest to configure. It uses Address Resolution Protocol, or ARP for short, to advertise IPs from a pool of IPs that we supply to Metal OB. Metal OB will then be able to allocate IPs from this pool to load balancer services each time we create one in the cluster. When Metal LB assigns an IP address to a load balancer, what it's really doing is just picking a node from the cluster that will respond, yes, I'm the destination for this particular IP, to new ARP requests that come in from the helper node for that IP address. That makes these IPs effectively virtual IPs, or VIPs, because they don't physically exist on any particular interface and they'll float between nodes as Metal LB sees fit. So there's a couple of drawbacks in the way that this particular approach works. So firstly, all traffic for a load balancer service will go through the one node that's been selected to maintain that particular VIP, the one that answers yes, I have that IP address, talk to me, 
even if the destination pods don't reside on that node. So if you have a really high traffic application, this might cause a bottleneck for you. Secondly, there can be a bit of a delay in the failover for this method. If anything happens to the node that owns the BIP, you'll need to wait for Kubernetes to report that the node is down, and then Metal LB will be able to reassign management duties of that BIP to another node. And as we know, Kubernetes reporting that a node is in a not ready state can take upwards of five minutes. Now, BGP mode is more performant, and I would say production-like, but it comes at a cost of needing a router that actually supports BGP. So in BGP mode, Metal LB advertises the IPs assigned to the load balancer services to BGP compatible adjacent routers, which supports routing the VIPs to multiple nodes so that not all traffic has to pass through a single node. So this is all great, but like I mentioned, you need a BGP compatible router. So as you've probably guessed, also based on the static route that we've already set up for this video, I'm sticking to the layer two mode to get up and running quickly and because I don't have a BGP compatible router in this environment. Okay, so let's continue. We can copy this config here and we can create a new file. In this case, I already have the file created. So the only thing that we have to update is the addresses field. So you can see here, I have set the address pool range of 192.168.22.100 to 192.168.22.130. So that is just a range of IPs available on this network here that are currently unused. Now we can apply that config. Now there is a couple more things we have to do specifically because we're using OpenShift. If we navigate to installation, cloud compatibility, and scroll down a little, we can see this section of the page here. We can see that two additional changes are required. We need to change the pod UIDs and we need to grant Metal LB additional network privileges. So to do that, we need to remove a specific field called run as user from both the controller deployment and the speaker daemon set. And then we also need to grant the speaker daemon set elevated privileges. So we may as well start with the latter first and grant the elevated privileges and then move on to removing the run as user field. So let's edit the controller. We can search for run as user. And we can see here that we have the correct field. Now we need to do this to the speaker daemon set as well. The first time I did this, I didn't actually have to remove the run as user. So this might be updated, but I'll just check again. Yeah, so I don't think there's any need to do that at the moment. Okay, great. Everything's looking good there. Let's check out our Hello World deployment. And there you go. You can now see that we have an external IP that's been assigned to our load balancer service. Let's grab that and try accessing it in the browser. Awesome. And there you go. So that's working well. So you can see how easy it is to access your applications running on OpenShift now from outside the cluster. We can easily run another application if we wanted to. We can expose it as a load balancer also and have another IP from the load balancer pool assigned to that service. So here you can see the file called hello world orange.yaml. It's a manifest file of the exact same app that we have running now, except it has an orange background instead. So we can see how easy it is to start that app and expose it as a load balancer also. We can see here that we've got a new IP address provided from the load balancer IP pool. We can do the exact same thing. All right, awesome. So that's it. In future videos now, we can use the load balancer service to front things like the Istio ingress gateway. And it just means that we don't have to mess around with node ports so much. Now for these specific examples, you probably could have got away with just using node ports. But getting this set up actually ticks two boxes for us. Firstly, it brings our on-prem installation of OpenShift more in line to what the cloud offers by default. And number two, I plan on using this environment to build on some future videos that I have planned, specifically around the OpenShift service mesh, where I'm gonna use the load balancer to front an Istio ingress gateway. Now, if you enjoyed this video or you like the sounds of the upcoming videos that I have planned, please remember to hit subscribe and tick the bell icon so that you can get notified when I release them. All right, thanks again and bye for now.